Well, I am absolutely thrilled to be presenting our awards for the Autism Connect Student Design Competition that's been running this year. So this competition is part, is part of uh, Autism Speaks Innovative Technology for Autism uh, Initiative. And we're also sponsoring the uh, tech demo today. And I, I just noticed how many people are enjoying all the technology. And it's so great to see families here engaged in this. So, you know, technology is a very important part, uh, both of autism research and autism treatment. And it's allowing us to explore innovative and really potentially groundbreaking interventions for people with autism and their families. We've been very proud to lead the way in this initiative. And we feel like it's just um, starting to hit its stride. The potential here is enormous. And it's going to be amazing over the next several years to see how it comes to fruition. And as I said before, one of our delights is the families who come and participate and try out the demos. And we want you to give us feedback, kids, about whether you think these uh, are actually cool things to work with or not. Uh, and families can tell us whether they think it's helpful for their kids. Now this year, we took a new direction. And we sponsored uh, a uh, partnership with 477 and Javote to launch a competition of design students, for design students, called Autism Connects. Now the challenge that we posed to the students was relatively straightforward. We wanted them to create a technology design that would help individuals with autism connect better to the world and people around them, but also to help the world around the people that don't have autism connect and understand uh, people that are on the spectrum. So connection is the key, and we called it Autism Connects. So I'm pleased to say that the way this worked is that we first had a uh, community of experts. And uh, this included individuals with autism and their families, and they made recommendations to the original design ideas that were submitted. Because you have to realize that many of the people who submitted had never worked in the area of autism, they didn't know that much about autism, and so they submitted their raw ideas and they got feedback from people that actually are living with autism about, you know, how it could be improved. And this actually created a wonderful community spirit, it was interactive, it was fun, and, and we want to just thank all the people who participated in giving feedback. You know, the competition, we feel, was an amazing success, believe it or not. Um, 126 student design ideas were submitted from over 30 countries. So it truly uh, fulfills the idea of this being an, not only an international meeting, but an international uh, competition. And I think it shows the level of passion and, and uh, just interest that people have in this. Now the online community then voted uh, based on these submissions, and they voted for the top six. And I'm amazed that we had 2.5 thousand people who took uh, part in that voting. So, uh, you know, it's not quite like American Idol, but, <laughs> but you know, hey, maybe next year, you know, we'll be saying 25 million. Anyway, you can find out uh, who the community prize winners are by visiting the Core 77 website. Now the prizes I'm going to present today are for our jury prize winners, and I'd like to thank the panel of judges for their time and commitment in selecting our top three jury prize winners. Let me tell you who our judges were. Temple Grandin, John Elder Robeson, Pat Miranda, Peter Mundy, Dan Feshback, Eves Behar, Lisa Straussfeld, Richard Seymour, Peter Gerhardt, and Andy Shear. So thank you all for your time and uh, So, moving on to announce our fantastic winners. In first place is a team idea that came from the University of Illinois College of Fine and Applied Arts Industrial Design, and that is for Greg Katz and Tom Rem. Tom can't be with us, but we're happy that Greg is here to join us and I'm going to allow him to describe this fantastic technology idea called GoBud. So uh, this is GoBud, 
and this was uh, part of the uh, Core 77 Autism Speaks uh, design competition. The concept is you have this little little guy, he, he moved, maneuvers on the ground, he's, he's just, he'll go anywhere. And okay. it's controlled by two or three remote controllers. Okay. Each child has their own controller. All right. And so as you see here, each child has a remote, they're pointing it in a direction, the go bug goes. Now specifically, if the two remotes are pointing straight, GoBug's going to go straight. If they're pointing left, it's going to go left. And what that does for a child with autism is it makes them work together with another child, um, watch each other's hand movements, look each other in the eye, communicate, um, and most importantly, it allows them to have fun while doing yeah. that. So, um, it looks and fun. the catch, yeah, I would, as a college student, I would play with it myself. So, the catch is that if they're both pointing the same direction, it's going to go faster. Okay. As opposed to, they're both pointing in opposite directions, it's still going to go straight. Okay. It's going to take that, that median, but it's not going to go as fast. And so that gives the child incentive to work together to make it go faster. All right. Some applications are for school. A teacher says, what's 8 minus 5? You have these pads on the ground with different numbers, um, 5, 8, 7, whatever. But they want it to go to 3 because that's the correct answer. Okay. And so the ch kids talk to each other. They say, oh, what's the answer? Oh, it's 3. Okay, sure. let's make it go to 3. And so they maneuver it there. Another application is just for home. So you want children to play together at home, um, have play dates. So it creates a social. It's it's all uh, about the social interaction. With it's everyone. Um, although it helps with every your spatial yep. uh, or, um, orientation, um, uh, eye, making eye contact, okay. uh, gross motor skills. Um, the basis, the the point is that it's all about uh, creating an experience, getting people included, working together, having fun okay. together. Um, Let's uh. Let's get a uh, just a wrap up real sure. quick to, um, or just the most interesting thing that you, about it. So, um, GoBug is not designed just for children with autism. It's designed for all children. It's designed for all people. It's about people coming together and enjoying one experience together. Awesome. So, um, first, I just want to thank everyone here. Um, I mean, this is like a crazy experience for me. I'm just like a student, so. Um, <laughs> This is really awesome, and I uh, just want to thank you all for it, especially uh, Simon over there. And um, as she said, um, my partner couldn't make it today, Tom Rim, so please give him due credit as well, because uh, this was a 50-50 project. Um, also, uh, I just want to say that you just want to talk about COVID? Just a little bit. So I mean, um, from, from the start, this is just all about the people we're designing for, and it's uh, children with autism. And so our whole focus was, was always on providing them with something that would be fun and new and um, could maybe um, help them out in just a small way. And uh, the goal was just to create something that was intuitive, that was uh, for everyone to use, that was inclusive, and hopefully we did that with our project. And uh, we're just so honored that um, you guys took interest in our project, and uh, thank you again. is We Sing, uh, which was designed by Noelle uh, Cunningham from the Maryland Institute College of Art in Baltimore, Maryland. So I'd like Noelle to come forward to talk about We Sing. We Sync is a platform um, that can be used across uh, the web, smartphones, or tablets. And the basic idea is to um, create a, a place where caregivers can create a specialized profi profile for an autistic individual and um, they can actually set goals and see one another's goals and sink in. Basically the idea is that doctors, therapists, um, parents, teachers, they often will talk to the parent or the child but they don't necessarily talk to one another. Um, so the idea is that with my platform, um, we think they'll be able to, to talk to one another, set goals, track achievements, um, and just get on the same page. And the basic idea is that uh, creating more consistent care will be um, help the child progress faster. Um, and it would take uh, less uh, pressure off of the uh, parent to be the primary messenger of the information, because I think that can be stressful going back and forth and talking to each person. I know I talked to a parent today who said, I have all my information in a gigantic binder, but no one ever gets to see that uh, information. And so the idea is 
you know, just having it in a place to be accessed, accessed and edited by everyone um, just helped get everyone on the same page. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for taking the interest in my idea. Thanks to Autism Speaks for giving us this great opportunity, um, and Core 77 as well. Um, just today, we've gotten a lot of really, really valuable feedback, um, and so that's excellent. Uh, yeah, so my concept, WeSync, is basically um, an application that can be used on the web, um, uh, iPad, tablets, smartphones, um, and the basic idea is that doctors and parents and teachers and therapists, they often talk to the parent or the child regarding the care, but um, they don't usually talk to one another. So my platform is to try to get people on the same page and share the goals. And so the overall idea is that creating consistency um, will make the care more comprehensive and hopefully have the child progress faster. So thank you. As a clinician who's worked in the field, and I know there's clinicians out in the audience and, we, and families know that there are so many different people that work with a child, and it is so true that often one person doesn't know what the other person is doing, and it's not a coordinated plan. So the idea of developing something that could help to have a coordinated program like that, I, that's going to be so helpful for families. Okay. So in third place, we have another idea from the Maryland Institute of College, the College of Art in Baltimore, Maryland. So, you know, they're obviously doing something right in Maryland, in Baltimore. So, uh, and this was designed by Cameron Zotter, and the idea is called Visual Watch. So, Cameron? So basically my product is the visual watch. Okay. Uh, let's, let's yeah, what this is is a way for autistic children to visualize time a little bit differently. Okay. Um, so for example, I find that it will ease their anxiety if, if they can visualize time graphically mm -hmm. through the use of icons and graphics. So for example, this would be the, the watch that, that the child would use. And this is uh, an example of a 10 minute or sorry, a one hour timer. So for example, each dot is a minute and it fills in when it's passed. Um, so eventually it would show like two minutes left and then an icon pops up like it could be playtime or dinner time or school time or whatever. Um, and basically I've just got different visualizations of, of time, like this one's time for the school oh, cool. bus. Oh, I like um, that. That's this one, really great. Yeah, so this one actually combines a traditional digital um, numerical clock with the icons. Okay. So then the child can actually get used to the numerical system as well. Sure. Um, That's great. Okay, I echo my colleagues' remarks about um, thank you to autistic Thanks to Simon. Um, thanks to everyone who's given me feedback on the visual watch. Um, the story that inspired me to create the visual watch was a story that I heard of a mother who had an autistic child. She told her child that her father was going to come back home in two weeks. The child immediately went to the front door and waited. He didn't have, he didn't understand the time, he didn't, couldn't get that sense. So I wanted to create a visual interface for the time that the child can use to Great piece of the job. And um, that's my idea. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Sophia just pointed out that all of these are on the table over there. So please take a moment after we're done and, and, and check them out. And that's uh, actually a great segue because I wanted to. Um, say a special thank you actually to Sophia Colomarito because the design competition was her idea. Yeah, it was a brilliant idea and I'm sure she's excited to see it um, being you know, actualized here. So, And I think you'll all agree that these were truly exceptional ideas and that it's amazing to see how people get inspired 
by something they see and then their heart, you know, gets translated into these amazing ideas. So, and I also think that these ideas reflect um, the diversity in which uh, technology can be applied uh, to help people with autism and their families. Now this competition has served to create a new community of young people that are thinking about autism. And our hope is that they will all take this experience and go back into their careers and keep autism at the forefront of their minds. And one final comment is that we hope that all of the people who participated, in particular Greg and Tom and Noel and Cameron, that they will, in, in all of the different uh, technologies that you're seeing demonstrated here, that people will now work to take these ideas and to move them out into the real world, into production, and that's a whole other phase. So we hope that these will someday be out into the hands of families and making a real difference. So lastly, I just want to give special thanks to our I, their Innovative Technology Initiative chairs. And this is Katharina Boser. Katharina, where are you? So thank you so much for all you do. And this is something for them that comes from the heart. And they have put in so much time and energy into this. So thank you for all you do, honestly. So please just enjoy the rest of the, the tech demo. Uh, go and congratulate the winners and see all these uh, new gadgets and, and uh, have fun. So thank you all for coming.